Hello and good morning. It's now been exactly six months since the accident involving me, my Kawasaki Z900RS, a small red Hyundai car, and even more unfortunately, the absolutely innocent driver of that car. Now, human beings tend to like arbitrary lines in the sand, so it's six months to the day. I'm going to explain how the accident happened, my thoughts about it, the repercussions, and to try and answer the question about what's next. So in terms of rehab though, I'll be doing a separate video on that which will be out soon. So first of all, let's cut to the chase. The accident was entirely my fault. The facts are that it was a beautiful sunny day back in May. The roads were clean and dry. I had a good night's sleep and I was on my way to work. It was around 8am. Immediately in front of me was a car and in front of that car there was a bus. We had just come out of a 30 mile an hour zone, the road had begun to straighten out and there was a good clear view ahead of me. As the unbroken white line on the road changed to a dotted white line, I pushed the indicator, twisted the throttle and moved to overtake. Almost immediately there was a car right in front of me and there was no way I could avoid it. I remember having not so much a what the fuck moment and more a kind of how the fuck did that get there moment. I instinctively wrenched the bars to one side but I couldn't avoid it. So I struck the car with my right leg and foot taking the impact. I was probably doing around 60-65 miles an hour at the time and if the car was say doing 40 the combined impact speed was therefore around 100 miles an hour. Most of it taking Taken by my knee. The next thing I know, I'm flat on my back, staring up at the beautiful blue sky and feeling weirdly calm. And also I had a sense that perhaps I'd gotten away with it. Um, from what the police had said, it was likely that I had flipped over the car, rolled a few times, and then I came to rest at the side of the road. So I was on my own for around maybe five minutes. And to be honest, I felt okay. I wiggled my toes and fingers, but of course I didn't try and get up. I had a rucksack on my back uh, with a laptop in it and rather stupidly I was more worried about that being damaged. Luckily it was a Windows PC and not a Mac. Um, I was still on my own when I tried to raise my head slightly to see what was actually going on and that kind of was the <coughs> moment. So my lower leg was at a horizontal right angle to my knee. There was blood seeping through my jeans and the pain had suddenly gone through the roof. I genuinely thought I was going to lose my leg. My only comfort was that I could still wiggle my toes and the pain, although horrific, was only coming from my leg. So my head and squishy bits and stuff sort of felt okay. So by now a few folk had arrived at the scene and they stayed with me and they were just simply brilliant. While it was an awful situation, it's also, you know, just an affirmation of just how great people can be. I asked about the driver of the other car and they assured me they were okay. Around me was a burly guy, I think he was an XL serving fireman I think, who said he'd had worse and it was going to be okay. And in a very strange coincidence, a lady who worked at my local dentist was also there and uh, she recognised recognized my name. So we agreed it was probably best to cancel my next appointment. Both also went to see my wife after the accident and I can't thank them enough. After a few minutes, the first responders arrived and swung into action. I phoned my wife and work up. I was pumped full of painkillers and the air ambulance loaded, uh, landed. At this point, I was told my leg needed to be straightened and that my boot needed to be taken off. Well, yeah, you can imagine what that was like. Then they cut my jeans off, noting I was wearing a pair of Furigan Aramid riding jeans with D30 body armour at the knees and hips, lovely jeans which fitted like a glove. The scissors kept rub rubbing against my skin and as they peeled them back I saw a glimpse of bone. Um, I was loaded into the helicopter, breathalyzed, and I remember seeing Linda's farm from the air as we flew over to the RVI hospital in Newcastle. After x-rays, I was wheeled into the theatre for my first operation which was to stabilise the leg by fitting an external fixator. The damage was a right kneecap that had been smashed to bits, an open fracture of the femur combined with tons of soft tissue damage and to finish it all off, uh, a broken left collarbone. Luckily though, no squishy bits uh, were damaged and my head and spine were fine. So I breathed in the anaesthetic. The next thing I know, I'm coming around in a bay full of blinking screens and I'm wired up to a million monitors and tubes. The nurse came over to me and asked how I was feeling and whether I was aware I was in intensive care. 
I wasn't. So he explained that as I had fallen asleep in theatre, I had gone into cardiac arrest and my heart had stopped for about a minute or so. The anaesthetist had got me going again, obviously, but I was in ICU in order just to understand what, what had caused it. Uh, the anaesthetist uh, later came in to see me and to apologise um, if he'd broken my ribs during CPR. So obviously I said any time. After 24 hours, though, they decided that the arrest was due to naturally low blood pressure, dehydration and also blood loss. So then I always moved to a normal trauma ward. Four days later, the fixator was removed and I was pinned and plated. Overall, I was in hospital for 23 days before being transferred home, where it was another two months before I managed to get outside on crutches. During that time, the police came to see me and took a statement, and I took full responsibility. Thankfully, the other driver was and is doing OK. They have no serious injuries, but they did need to be cut out of their car. From a work perspective, I'm self-employed, and luckily I was able to work remotely in the hospital and also throughout the summer before finishing up a few months back back in october um, back in october the bike was deemed a write-off and i was also summoned to court on the charge of careless driving i put in an early plea of guilty uh, by letter and then turned up to court a few weeks ago to say i was and still feel totally ashamed of the whole affair is an understatement the court hearing though once it was over uh, seemed like a good line from which to move forwards on and, you know, at court, I have to say, I was treated fairly and courteously by everybody. I had a chance to speak to the magistrates where I explained that I simply couldn't understand why I hadn't seen the car. I was and I still remain mystified. I know what happened, just not how. Anyway, the upshot is I was fined around £800 and received six points on my licence. My focus now is entirely on rehab, physio and exercise. Now everyone asks, will I get back on a bike? I can't answer that at the moment because physically I'm unable to do so. And while emotionally I don't have any particular fear about riding a bike, I also know obviously this can't happen again, ever. I suspect my insurance may also make it somewhat prohibitive. So I still have my CRF and Guzzi in the garage and I know for certain the CRF and trail riding is over for me. That's fine and I'll get around to selling it next year. I am looking at scooters though, in particular the Honda ADV 350. So we'll see. The reality is though that prior to the accident behind family and work, bikes were my priority. My priority now is getting well and for that reason in bikes in the sense of me riding them is not that important at the moment. I'd love to be full of bravado but that's not just me. But I still love the things though. So that's it. I'm not sure what 2023 will be like. Certainly my plans for this channel can no longer be realised, but you know, that's OK. And I am feeling super positive most of the time. Finally, thanks to everybody and I'll see you soon.